hey, this is Kwong Lee from Satellite Films. I'm here with my friend and chief creative officer of Creative Drive, Cliff Pia. Thank you for being here, Cliff. Hey, Kwong. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Um, you actually on set, so this is kind of cool doing it this way. Exactly. We've got our mics. You know, you got your guitar. <laughs> well, um, tell me uh, what your job is. Uh, that's a huge job, chief creative officer, but on a high level, the Cliff Notes version for our audience, what is your job? My job is to oversee the creative um, content that we make at our company. So what that means is I'm kind of a quality control guy, I guess you might say, but my job that I'm looking at the quality of tends to be in the, in the line of creative. And so what that means is I look at client briefs. I look at how our creative teams are interpreting them. And I'm usually part of that interpretation of that. And then I make sure that that vision that we end up pitching back to the client that they accept, which I'm involved in the creating of the pitch. Pitching is a lot of what I do because you're always trying to get new work constantly. So when you get it to make sure that what we pitched is kind of what we deliver, um, you know, that, that takes, that's what my time is, is usually spent doing. So for our audience who doesn't know the, the sort of, uh, way it generally goes. You talked about a brief. You talked about a pitch. Um, this is more stuff I imagine that your normal creative, regular creative directors and and then senior creative directors do. But can you walk the audience through? Um, you got an RFP coming in from a, from a, from a brand. How does that come from an idea from you guys to a finished awesome commercial or digital spot on the air? Oh wow. Okay. Well, that's that's a journey. Right yeah, there. I know. Maybe and maybe I, like a Cliff Notes version. <laughs> Cliff, Cliff, Cliff Pia Notes version. <laughs> my notes? My notes version. Um, okay, so so a, a creative, an RFP comes in, and the first thing you have to do is win it to get the client to feel that they trust you with their um, messaging, with their product, or whatever that is they're doing. So stage one is you have to dazzle them with your thinking, and then also show them examples of your work that has to be very close to what they're looking for, but not so close that they feel like, oh, everyone's doing what I just asked you to do. It's a tricky line, right? So you wanna prove that you can do it and you want them to trust you. And then uh, once they do that, then, you, then, you, then you're at the beginning of the project. And at that point, we kick off our creative team, everybody who's going to be involved. And that includes, and the way we do it in our company is we kick off everyone at once. I've always felt that everybody is on the team and should start at the same time. And, we, and the way we have our, our offices set up in my headquarters here in Southern California, we all get together literally in a room and we kick off a project and we talk about everyone. And this includes the, the, um, well, the director, the editor, the, the copywriter, even the music, everything, uh, the graphic artists, the animators, anyone who's going to be involved, I like having at the kickoff. So everyone gets the idea of what the essence of this concept is. Because there's usually a, a nugget, a creative nugget that's going to drive this thing. And in order for that to stay true, you don't wanna have things so siloed that people are not connected to each other. Once you get to that, then we create concepts, we create boards, we make animatics, in which case we show the client all along the way what it's gonna look like, what it's gonna sound like. And then we do testing and we, we make animatics to be tested. Then once everybody feels like, okay, we've worked all the kinks out, we know that this concept will work with our demographics, we, we know that we're, we're tested up the yin-yang so we can make sure that everything's going to be, honestly, what it is is so everybody can know that they can blame somebody else if it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, then, and then we shoot the project if it's a shooting project right. or we go into animation if it's a post um, CGI project. And then we just go through the process of that. Everything I just talked about is about a six-week process. Yeah. You know, um, just so interesting in the agency world, like how much data informs creative these days? More than ever. It's actually really tricky, right? Because you don't want to have data take over creative because creative is about storytelling and data is about measuring the effect of the storytelling. Mm. If data starts creating the storytelling, what I would be afraid of is that it would become robotic or sure. it would become, I don't know, just too formulaic. But, but I, I could be wrong. You know, that's just my opinion. And uh, 
you know, there, there's, there's such a human element to what we do. Uh, and you know this. So okay. You have to make sure that a human being is going to react a certain way because that's what everything we do is about triggering an emotional response. People only remember, retain, or click and buy from an emotional response. To just hand that over to a bunch of data to do is actually would worry me. I'd be willing to try it, you know, if there was like, you know, an, an AI program that would make that would do creative, I'd be totally down for checking that out. Yeah. We all have to assume that's in the works. Right. Yep. I'm sure it is somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure it is. And, and we also have to assume triggering human emotions is something that's going to be needed forever. It doesn't matter how technical we get. So I do believe that there's longevity in that in human connection. I, I totally agree. And I can just go back to like, whenever I'm looking at a spot or reviewing something that my editor did or something we, we, we created, I always ask myself, how's this feeling? You know, how, how, how's it feel? And that's kind of the, the response you're, you're, you're looking for. So I think there's something very, very poignant in what you're saying. Bro.